Hi, I'm Kirk DiGiorgio, DJ and producer, and I'm here for Sonic Academy to present to you this tutorial on an amazing new contact instrument from a company called Slate and Ash, that's Slate plus Ash if you're searching for it online, and it's called Cycles, and it is both a loop processor, loop manipulator type instrument, and also a granular processor. There's lots of deep modulation possibilities, and there is also some fantastic sequencing from four Cartesian sequences. So we're going to delve into this. It's pretty deep. It's pretty amazing. Everyone's talking about it. This is Cycles from Slate and Dash. Okay, so let's dive into Cycles. As I mentioned in the intro, it is an instrument for contact. So what I need to do is go down to Native Instruments and find my instance of contact. Now, I have a full version of contact here, um, but you can use Cycles on the free player version of contact, providing it's version 6.2 for either the free or the full version of contact. That's what you need. Let's drag it over into our MIDI track here in Ableton Live. So it's loaded up and we have all our contact instruments in the browser. And just as for the rest of them, Cycles has a drop down menu for our instruments. And you can see here three folders, loops, presets, and a user folder. And uh, obviously the user folder would be blank for now because that is for importing your user generated loops. Um, so let's open the first one because we first of all, we're going to deal with Cycles predominantly as a, a loop instrument. You'll see here we have six further folders of loops uh, with a description for each folder. So without further ado, let's uh, just go into the first one, machine drums. And we have two instruments, machines and thresholds. Let's drag machines over and load it up. There we have it, we have a nice clear GUI and that's one of the strengths of Cycles uh, despite being one of the most deeply programmed contact instruments I've come across. It really is laid out very intuitively and you can find everything with a very simple click or two. Okay, so at the top of the GUI, um, as with every native instruments contact instrument, you have the regular menus for changing the output, the MIDI channel, then it gives you indicators for the amount of voices and the memory you're using. Uh, the global tuning and the global volume, we're just going to leave those as they are. Now we get down to the GUR for cycles itself. Now you'll see we have a red strip over on the left hand side and a blue strip here. I will be explaining these later on because I want to keep chapter one very simple to explain the concept of cycles in loop mode. Now I say loop mode because cycles isn't just a loop generating instrument. It's also a granular processor synthesizer and uh, that is indicated by the L stands for loop and G which stands for grain. So you'll see here if I hover over loop, it's also got a plus button and we'll go be exploring plus and the grain mode in full later on in this tutorial. Clearly on the left hand side here, we just have the name of the instrument and then we have the folder, which was machine drums. And then we have a collection and um, note, I say a collection of loops because it's not just one loop. You actually get a collection of loops, which in its normal state is mapped across the keyboard, one loop to each key. And that's why we have this key indicator here, C3. That's the name of the loop. And there you'll see, as I hold the key down, you'll see these grids light up. And if I go up to C sharp, rather than going up in pitch, it will play a different loop. Okay, and obviously that continues up the keyboard.
OK, you get the picture. Now, alongside the key indicator and the loop name, we have loop, which is highlighted. That's because we're in the loop mode. Then we have sequence. And this is for opening the sequence window. And I'm not going to open that quite yet because we, again, it's a very important part of cycles. And we're going to explore that in full later on in the tutorial. And over here, we have an expand button. And what I need to do before explaining expand is just go into the basic concept of play direction and slices, because that is basically how we play our loops. So it's important to get the concept of the direction of play. And the best way to do that is to imagine a tape deck type scenario where you can see that cycles, the designers have also thought in this kind of method because they have labeled the direction of play as a playhead, as you would have on an old school tape deck and slices the loops split up into different tempo synced slices okay so if we start using audio to explain how this works the direction is very self-explanatory to begin with because we simply have playhead highlighted and you'll see these con three controls here are highlighted direction the size of the grid and at the moment we have options for slices which are off. So we're just going to get our mouse and the way you change this, I was trying to pull this, the mouse to the left and the right and it wouldn't do anything. You actually just simply hover over the icon and put the mouse up, okay? So the direction, if I was to now play our C3 loop, what will happen is the direction of play will now be reversed the slices will stay in their same grid positions, but the slices will be obviously played in reverse because that's how a tape deck would work. OK, so. Pretty self-explanatory. OK, so that's the you can see now already the differences between the play direction and your slices. And the fun really starts when you start combining those two concepts and you can get all kinds of neat patterns going on. So if we were to change the direction again, you can see here we have a kind of pendulum. It will continue to go forward if I hold the key down. And then it will automatically reverse. Now our next direction is random. And now each time I press a key and then release and then press a key again, it will do a dice throw and we can, it will either be backwards. There we go, two backwards in a row and then a forwards. And it, you can see how the random works. Okay, so that's our playhead. And don't forget, it's important to separate that in your mind from the concept of the slices. The second playhead control that we can change is the grid size. Here you can see our grid is in um, quarters at the moment, and that represents quarter notes. But before we play around with the grid, I just want to demonstrate something very important, and that is how everything is tempo synced to your DAW. Now, the easiest way to do that, I've created a very simple one bar loop of our C3 note. If I were to put the uh, metronome on, you can hear very clearly how everything is tempo synced. And as you watch the grid light up as well, you can see after every bar and as the note is repressed, it gets the loop gets reset back to the beginning and that is indicated by a flash on all of the grids across the GUI. Okay, so that's fairly self-explanatory. If I change the master tempo, you'll see it stays perfectly in sync. So that's great for creating polyrhythms and all kinds of different patterns, which we will go into later on. And now we can also tied to that concept, we can see how the grid mode works. At the moment, as I said, we've got it on lighting up every quarter note. If we go up with the mouse, we change all the grids to eighth notes. It 
sixteenths. Sixteenths is the maximum. You can go right down to one bar. Half notes. And back to our quarter notes. Okay, so again, that's fairly straightforward so far. One thing I also want to demonstrate now is these grids here can be turned on and off with a click of a mouse. And this is very, very key to getting some really neat patterns going. So I'm going to change the grid to eighth notes. And obviously we don't need to change these because we just have a one bar loop going at the moment. And if you see, if I click on the first part of the grid here, that would be eliminating the first slice. And then let's also cut out those. Now, this is where the content that comes with cycles is very key because as you can probably see and hear, the loops, the drum loops certainly that we have here have been sliced up according to transients. So they make perfect rhythmic sense. And that is, of course, very important, again, for when we try and create some interesting polyrhythms and different patterns as we go forward. So now you can hear... You can see that we've deleted three of our slices and that has continued over into our second grid here. So we still have our eight slices played. It's just, it's skipping those three and continuing into our second block here. And now if I was to delete this one also, and so forth. Now you can start to see how we can get some really interesting patterns going. Okay, let's stop that for now. Let's keep that on. Now what I'm going to do quickly off screen is um, put a 4-4 kick drum in because um, I like to hear these patterns up against a solid 4-4 and you can see how interesting we can get. So I'll just do that very quickly. Right, so I've just added a very simple 4-4 kick, and so you'll be able to hear the loop against that. Now there are two very different techniques when using the mouse to delete the grid. If I was to press stop, and if I was to delete these using the mouse, and you'll see here, it will still count our grid of eight, except it will just miss out those two slices and just count those as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight. So we should be able to see that. Okay, and it resets and you can see all the grid light up. Nice and neat. Okay, let's change our grid. And when changing the grid like that, you'll see that it still deletes as if we were in. It keeps the settings from the eighth note. Okay, so you can still keep those. Now, what I want to show you is, let's stop again. Let's fill in these again. Now, if I was to delete these whilst the loop was running, something very different will happen. So remember, when we stopped it and deleted the slices, they played as normal, but if you delete them while it's playing along, watch this. Okay, so you can hear now it's overlaying the extra slices that are compensating for deleting these three here, but it's playing it over the top of the existing loop and it's giving it a really nice texture. 
Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.